For the second part of the notes in section 10.8, we are going to work through the following example problems. For each problem, I want you to think about which theorem applies, and then I want you to write the appropriate power theorem next to the problem. We're going to work through the odd problems together, and then I'm going to have you do the even problems individually. For the first one, we should be thinking about the chord-chord power theorem. Remember, we're working with one chord at a time. So we can say that the yellow segment, which is 3, times the purple segment, which is x, must equal the product of the blue and red segments, which is 6 times 2. So we get 3x is equal to 12, which leaves us with the value of x to be 4. Moving down to number 3. For number 3, we're working with a secant tangent power theorem. And if you recall, for this one, we're going to take the tangent and multiply it by itself, and then set that equal to the entire secant segment times the external part. So the tangent squared, or you could think about it as the tangent times itself, would be 6 times 6, or 6 squared. We're setting that equal to the entire secant segment which is the entire orange segment, which is x plus 5. We're putting that in parentheses because it's a binomial, and then we're multiplying it by that external part of x. Distributing the x, we end up getting x squared plus 5x, and that's equal to 36. Since we're working with the quadratic equation, we want to make sure to set the equation equal to 0. I'm not showing this step here, but I subtracted 36 from both sides of the equation. Let's go ahead and factor. We want to find two numbers that multiply to negative 36, but add to positive 5. Those two numbers are 9 and 4. Positive 9, negative 4. Don't forget we have to set each of those factors equal to 0, though. So we end up getting that x can either be negative 9 or positive 4. Since we can't have a negative segment, we have to go with the positive version for the answer. So x has a value of 4. For example 5, we're working with the secant-secant power theorem. Remember the shortcut I told you, or the way to remember it, is you could think about secant times the external part and set that equal to the other secant segment times the external part. Well, the entire yellow secant segment here is going to be x plus 3. Then we have to multiply it by the external part, which is 3. Then we're going to set that equal to the entire secant segment, which is the green one here, which is made up of the 2 and 4, so it's 6. And then we multiply it by the external part, which is 4. We distribute the 3, and we're left with 3x plus 9 is equal to 24. And then we could go ahead and solve the equation. When we solve, we get that x has a value of 5. As I mentioned previously, I'd like you to work through the even problems on your own. So pause the video at this time, work them out, hit play once you're ready to compare your answers with mine. For number two, we should be thinking about the chord-chord power theorem again. And you should have an equation set up like this. You should get that x has a value of 3. For number four, we're working with the secant-secant power theorem. Remember, we're doing the entire secant times the external part and setting that equal to the entire secant times the external part. So you should have gotten 6 times 5 is equal to the quantity of x plus 2 times 2. Solving that, we should get that x has a value of 13. And then finally, for number 6, we're working with a secant tangent or tangent secant power theorem. Remember, we're taking the tangent and multiplying it by itself, so we're doing x times x, which gives us x squared. And then we're setting that equal to the entire secant segment, which is 20, times the external part, which is 5. Taking the square root of both sides of the equation, we get that x has a value of 10. Please keep in mind for these power theorems, you may be working with more complex diagrams, so you really want to be thinking about when it's appropriate to use the appropriate theorems.